Okay. Okay, you can hear me. Okay, okay, okay. So sorry, after the class, I will send the videos to everybody's mail, please. I will get it out. Not immediately today, maybe tomorrow or next. I will because there's a way they it's converted, and after it's conversion, then I'll start sending it to everyone. I'll send the link to everyone so that you can watch it anytime you want to. Now, okay, so when you now get to the, you know, they will now test. Once they test, sorry, I mix a lot of things, but uh, they are beneficial things. When they test for that, when they test for that, uh, for the what you brought, and they now discover it's not good, they give you two options. The first option is that, okay, you pay. Why we destroy it for you? As in, help you to dismiss. They don't call it destroy. They help you to dispose it. You know, they are not good. You can't bring it in. So we have to dispose it, and you have to pay for them to dispose it. Or you move them back to your country or to where you are bringing it. Now, so why I always, that's why, because to avert that kind of situations or conditions. So whenever I'm, I'm teaching or I'm explaining this to people, I try to, especially when you want to do a big project, I try to let you understand, okay, it's good. I follow the, don't follow the Nigeria, uh, uh, um, how do I say it? Non, no, especially if you see, you might think now, okay, I don't want to export. I just want to produce my coconut and make money. What if the opportunity for export comes in, or that is the only, you understand what I mean? You will be able to key in and not be stuck with having your things there. Look at another issue, for example, uh, the, the nuts, the nuts produce food. They produce foodstuffs that are more than what we can consume in Nigeria. But the biggest challenge, why you wonder, tomatoes will be surplus, pepper will be surplus, this will be surplus. Why are they not exporting it? Because they need these things because they did not produce them to meet the quality healthy standard that other people can eat. What they produce is only meant for Nigeria, is only meant for us, we. You know, you understand what I mean? So that is why things, a lot of food get to waste in Nigeria. So when I'm training, I like to put you through that system. Okay, you can decide to plant Nigeria standard, but you can also decide to consider, okay, if this is a long time future, is a long time something project I'm doing. Why don't I just go the standard way? Opportunities come. Definitely, there are opportunities. There. Like I told you, a lot of people, a lot of countries are exporting coconut. I will discuss about it, but we first go. I think we should gradually. Now, cost of co coconut seedlings. People have been asking. You saw the coconut seedlings I showed. That one, these other ones I showed, belongs to is Mr. Devayos coconut. This coconut. Yeah, it's actually in Ocean State. See, you can see this coconut there. It is an hybrid. He bought it, and candidly, I know a lot of people were asking. They were even tagging him. He just bought it off-road, and uh, he didn't know. He just planted it, and it was fruiting. But, and uh, like him explained, this coconut produced like 500 to 600 per annum, 600 fruit per annum. Now, there's one thing. There's one alternative. We, you can decide to say, okay, Mr. Adebayo, I want to take your coconut and propagate so that I can get that same breed. But if you take the coconut and propagate so that you can get the same product, if you do not give it good maintenance, if you do not give it nutrients, if your soil do not have the right nutrients, or you don't, you know what I mean, it's not going to produce for you like this. So sometimes you wonder, yes, okay, I was explaining to you about the mango, the mango that that man has, that fruits. There are things he did that makes that mango to start fruiting in one year. Now, if you calculate the mango, remember it was seedlings we bought, not seed. So the seedlings are used about six months, one year, where they are nurturing it. And so it's used one year within. So it takes two years for the mango to start producing. But if we are going to tell you, we say it's one year. Now, so there are things you need to do when you are planting, not just coconut. Let me give you that expo. Not only coconut. You can do the same with cashew. You can do the same with uh, mango. You can do this anything that is three crops. They have, there's a great maintenance system you need for them to be able to get good heat. Now we're going to do this. So I told you my class are always in two. I've gone to export. I'm coming back to planting. So you can start dropping your questions, start writing them so that uh, we can ask after the class. Okay, so like I said, 
this cost of the seedlings, to be candid with you, the cost varies. Now, it varies based on breed. For instance, Las Coda, Lagos State Coconut Development Authority, they have about three breeds of coconuts. They have three breeds. They have the hybrid that is dwarf. They have the, when we say dwarf, short one, that, 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 like that short ones I showed you, the one that you can use your hand to pluck. They have the hybrid that is dwarf and they have the tall one, as in the, that is very tall, that you now have to use a stick or something to pick it out. Now, their fruitings are different. Most of the hybrids are the ones that produce more. Now, for NIFO in Benin, NIFO is National, uh, National Institute for Oil Palm Research. They are in Benin. They also have coconut seedlings of another variety. Then Nihots at Ibadan. They also have coconut seedlings, also different variety. So the varieties you are getting depend on the source where you are getting them for your seedlings. Now, the maintenance is now what push push your coconut to produce more and to produce fast. You buy hybrid, fine. Then you still need to give it. Okay, for instance, I used to give one example. Uh, we buy in my vegetable farming, we buy a lot of seed. Like most people believe the expensive, the more expensive the seed, the better the production, which is not true. If you buy a good seed or a very expensive, they tell you this seed will give you 30 tons. That's it from the one. And on getting that seed, you get home. You do not do negative. Okay, your soil was not good. You get to the farm, your soil was not good, and uh, you or you plant in a very good soil, but you don't give it water. Your coconut, uh, your fruit, it will not produce well for you. Or you give it a bad soil, and uh, you give it a bad soil, and you give it plenty water, you will not get good result. You see, so they are components of things that you have to combine together to get good results in everything if in your coconut when you are planting. This is where people get it wrong. You can't do things haphazardly and expect, oh, you can't do things haphazardly and expect to get good results. So please, you need to watch out for this. Okay. So. <laughs> now, the system we want to use, how do we plan? <laughs> now, for the cost, let me give you the, the price range. Most times you get coconut, they are between 2000 to 5. A seedling, yes, I know you'll be asking me. Uh, I think I was discussing with somebody yesterday. He said they seem too expensive. Now, there's one thing, let me give you. If you get, it depends, like most of the government offices, is if you get your seedlings from People that have it, as in there are some private citizens and private people that sell, that breed seedlings themselves. Like, okay, I know somebody that breed palm, as in palm, palm fruits, which is part of co uh, coconut. He has a fruit that will fruit very well, but theirs are expensive. They even, they won't even collect Naira from you. You have to pay in dollars. I think the last, Last, is it a lady said that uh, mommy bought, we bought uh, some seedlings from him, palm seedlings, and uh, it was in dollars, maybe something, is in dollars. He doesn't sell in Naira, you will pay, I don't know, he doesn't collect money in Naira. He's in Nigeria, he's even around the Korodu site, to be candid with you. So, uh -huh. but the, you know, the government's own, some of them, you find that they might not give you the exact yield you are looking for. Now, so the price varies, 2,000, 2,500, 1,500. Some people will tell you they have the one of 500 Naira, whatever. Your source also decide how you are going to get the goodies. Your source of purchase is very, very important. Okay, so you should... Uh -huh. Now we want to plant our coconut. How do you plant to get to... How do you plant? Most people, when they want to plant, they just... Uh, when you go to the farm, you want to plant. I'm sure you'll be shocked at what I'm showing here. Most people, when they want to plant, they just okay. Uh, they just they just go to they just see the place and they start. After you get your seedling, how do you make it to grow? Not make it to grow. If you just go to your farm, you dig the place, put the seedlings there, and you cover it up. It will fruit. 
It might take several years. It might produce less fruits. It might, you understand? I told you about the mango, the fruits in less in one year. It was because we de uh, demanded extra work. And it was then I was, was telling me that, ah, I was, you know, because he asked me and I told him what to do. That's why that I don't have mango there. So now what you need to do is, if you want to, on the mango, if you want to plant your coconut, it's coconut, you know, if it's hybrid, you don't need, uh, the spacing will not be too wide because they are not growing tall, then they won't cover themselves from shade because they need, uh, they need sunlight all the time. So hybrid are planted at, I think, hybrid are planted at four meters, four meters apart. And uh, I think I should have them in my book as we're going, yes, we'll get there. Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. Hybrid, when you are planting, you can see plant population, I'll still go back to that picture to explain. Plant population, if you have your, you are planting at four meter, three to four meter distance for hybrid. No, they are not going to be that high. They will cover themselves up. They are small, small. You know what I mean. So you are planting at at four meter spacing. Then in an extra, depending on your three meter or four meter or the arrangement you choose to use, you are going to be having about two fifty to three hundred plants. Two fifty to three hundred plants. An acre. I hope this class. Oh. I hope we all understand what and uh, we all understand what an acre or an acre is. Acre is. Can you move your okay? Okay. So in an F now the difference I don't want to go into details full full details there. There's an hectare and there's an acre. For an uh, for an hectare, you we have about two fifty to three hundred plants. I hope you know the difference. An hectare is ten thousand square meters. An acre is four thousand square meters. So you know an hectare is two point five acres. Two and a half acres make an hectare. So you really need to understand that and to be able to arrange your spacing very well. So when you arrange your, to be able to arrange your plants very well. So when you own one hectare, you should be having like 250 to 300 plants, depending on three meter or four meter or what you choose to space. On an acre, you'll be having 80 to 100 plants of your coconut. Now, let me put this to us before we move. You don't need to plant an hectare. You accept you've determined or you want to do the, you already have the farm and you want to go, it's, you don't need to plant as much as that. Start small. You can, uh, then you can harvest for the next 50 years. 80 years actually. You know, I like to go moderate in so many things. You can keep harvesting. And that harvesting is dependent on, uh, is dependent on your maintenance. If you give it good maintenance, for instance, I bought a purple seedling from East West about five years ago. And when I bought the purple seedlings from Kaduna, it got here and uh, I, the, normally the purple seedlings don't last more than one year. But because of the way I took care of my purple, the purple lasted on my farm for five years. It's just last week I got to farm, one breeze blow it away. And I said, wow, it has tried. Normal dwarf purple. Instead, what it started doing on my farm is that it was very short before. Every year, it keeps increasing in size and it's producing. Then the production reduced, as in the volume of fruit it used to have, because the first year was very heavy fruit. So it started reducing. It stayed five years on my farm. So now you're, you harvest for a very long time. So now that's why I said it depends on your arrangement, okay, I want to do the Nigeria planting. My market is just Nigeria. But if you have a future plan, okay, I want this thing to be something possibly I can export in future or whatever, you should consider going standard and doing the standard thing, the best thing to do. Now, to make your fruit to do, to perform well, I have some diagrams I will show you. I know it's a lot of work and you might think, what is all this wala? Look at this picture here. Around the tree, you can see this tree, this is not, uh, coconut, but this is how to plant trees. You dig one meter, you see this distance, this place there, eh? you are going to dig one meter, one meter round. One meter here, one meter here, one meter here, one meter, one square meter. 
Then you see, if you don't have this pipe, what we normally use was we use uh, bamboo. You know, bamboo, inside the bamboo is, uh, you can pour water inside bamboo, bamboo, whatever, and it will drain straight into the soil. So you see what we do here. Then the other, see the way we did it here. What do we do? We mix some things together. Let me show you. You see, the planting hole, you dig the soil one meter by one meter, as in one meter, like in one meter square, then one meter depth, you dig it. Then you put gravel at the base. If you don't have gravel, you can use uh, stones. Why are we using the stones? So that water can flow. I'll show you another diagram now. Then you fill the manor, let me show you, you fill the manor on top of the, on the gravel before you put, you know, when you're bringing the seedlings, it's still very small. It's not, it's not up to one meter, the root is not long. So let me show you a graphical something of what I'm explaining. This is what most of us don't do. You, look, you see this? You see the one meter, one meter, one meter. You can, can, you can see it here, right here. One meter, one meter, one meter. Then that pipe that they put at the side there, you see the pipe here, and then you fill it with gravel. See, the first layer under your is gravel. This tree, when it was planted, the root was not as low as deep as this. The root will be somewhere here, see? somewhere small here. So you are going to, after this gravel, gravel, all this place from here up, coming up to this place, you are going to fill it with manure. Now it's not only manure, you mix manure, let me show you, you mix, uh, no, you mix manure plus limestone plus, uh, let me show you. So you mix them together to put into the gravel. That is how, so that is what we boost your plants materials for transplanting you is there are three now this is the mistake most people make we the soil our soil has been depreciated you have your farmland or you have your house site go and look at the soil there the soil are not good again erosion washing away everything they are not too good as they are supposed to be you know what i mean and because they are not really 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 that good again uh the nutrients there's no nutrient inside those soil again. So for you to help your plants, you know, most of uh, to help the plants, for you to get the max, that's why uh, the white guys, they don't, even if they're going to plant, they take good care of whatever they want to plant. And that's why you see the trees we establish very well and bring plenty fruits because they that's the foundation. Like I always use building your house. You can't do a foundation for story building for a bungalow, not at all. So you really need, this is what most people don't do when they are planting things. And then at the end of the day, ah, this thing did not fruit very well. I'm not getting good heat. I'm not doing this, I'm not doing that. So I always preach, if your plan from the beginning is to plant, if your plan from the beginning is to plant 10 acres, because of the expenses, because of the stress, because of the wala that will be involved for you to get this put in place, it's better to cut it down. Don't go for 10 hectares. Start gradually. Take good care of that one. See, and take good care of it. Even by the way it's getting established, you'll be surprised at the way it's coming up. And then you'll be sure, good, this is coming. Then you can move to the next one again. So that, that's why when I started this class, I said, please don't have this mindset that, oh, ha, I want to recover my money tomorrow. Ha, by next year, no. It is a long time, especially when you are planting trees. They are long time crops. They are long time plan. Like what I normally tell people, you can do use them for a retirement plan. So something you want to use for a retirement plan that you want to sustain you for a very long time, you should give it adequate care so that it can give you results. Now look at the materials for planting. We have cattle dung. Yes, I know we don't want cattle around us. But I don't mind, they should cage them. We go and buy the cattle dung. I don't mind buying for it. Of course, I want to use it to produce something. And I'm not going to dash anybody, I'm going to sell. So you should get cattle dungs. If you get poultry, they are good too, poultry waste. Enough. You know, we told you the one meter, you see the diagram I showed. Look at the diagram again. You are going to feel, you know, like I explained, the plant, this is not how you put your plant there. It's very small. It will be very small. 
when you put it in there. So you have to fill this place. It's only the space where the plant will stay. Okay, let me show you the num our this one here. You see this place? You see? Hmm? So you is only you all this place, all this, you are going to fill it with manure, cattle dung or poultry waste. You are going to fill it up. Because that's what the plant we eat, we live on. Yes. Okay. So you need plenty manure. You see the way they did the system here. This is gravel feeding the pipe here. But me, I won't, like I told you, we I use bamboo. So you fill it with stones. You can find stones. The stones will also be at the base. And that is what your plant will survive on. So for a start, you don't need undrained. You can start with 10, 10 plants. You can start with 20. See, sometimes it is not how big your farm is. It is how well, how product, products are your farm produce. For instance, a, a, um, if a tree, a plant is getting manure, rich manure, is getting nutrients, and uh, is being able to feed very well, it will give you more yield compared to the one you leave for rainfall. Look at this place. During dry season, you need to support with water. Look at it here. They are working through this. The gravel will allow water to flow down and the roots can still get water to feed, even in dry season. Um, three years ago, I went to consult for someone at, um, in Joss and uh, they want to plant cashew. The first suggestion I gave, they want to plant cashew on the, actually they, they bought 3,000 plants of cashew and uh, 3,000 plants of orange. And I gave, you see, I gave the suggestion, I said, you will need irrigation. But you see, people don't always listen to that side. Let me give you one point. If you are planting anything, be it trees or whatever, you are planting trees, and uh, uh, you, in a year, we have 12 months, and the trees are only getting water for, in, uh, the trees are only getting water for five months when the rain falls. What happened is that, the period they are not getting water, they will not produce for you. Now, let me give something. In Ghana, we were doing a project with Kole CPO. I think I did your Kole CPO, I can't remember. And uh, they showed up, they, we discussed with some of the other farmers in African countries, you know, they were exporting mangoes. And the man sink borehole in his mango farm. Boreholes, yes. They sink boreholes and they find a way to construct pipes and everything. You know what that means? The mango fruit twice a year. When I got back home here, I was telling my people, hey, is that lie, irony, no, no. So I've stopped coming back to give them information. If you give your trees, tree crops, that's why you see people invest so much in tree crops. So when you want that good result, you need to invest in that good result. You really need to invest in that good result. So the, uh, those other farmers, like uh, only Nigeria, that we are not exporting any crops, any, we are not exporting mango, we are not exporting coconut, we are not exporting anything because most of us, we want to get results quick, quick, quick. Now, now, now. And then in our process of trying to get results now, 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 we pay more and still we don't get results. Yes, we pay more for that process because, okay, you can plant, uh, I told you, it, the price does not determine your age. That a plant, that a seedling is expensive does not mean you will get better yield. But that your management is good is a, is a signal that you will get better yield. Your management, if it's good, you get better aid. If your management is not good, forget it. So in dry season, they supply their mango tree. In the, my, where I was staying before, the guy I used to call my landlord. There's a mango they brought from, you know, we are close to border around me here. So there's a mango he bought. They, some people travel to, uh, uh, to all this Cote d'Ivoire, all these other country through the back way. Yeah? And they brought a mango and he planted it. This mango sometimes fruits twice in a year, and the fruits are very big. Some of the foreigners here, some, they brought, you know, but, as, but sometimes once, why? Because nobody is taking care of it. Nobody is giving it extra water here. Nobody is giving it extra nutrients. So if you give them the money you spend 
in supplying them extra nutrients, they will pay you back times 10 of it when the fruit better for you. The same thing with coconut. A coconut we maybe is planning to give you 100 fruits. By the time you take good care of it, it will give you 300, 500, a one plant. And it will continue producing that for you for as long as you take care of it. But if you leave it to nature, to God, to whatever, like I told you, the man that wanted to do 3,000 uh, 3, cashew and 3,000 orange, yes, there's market for sweet orange too. So I, yes, I had suggested that you could dig a hole, just like what I was telling, I'm telling you class there. Dig a hole, get manure to fill it in before putting those seedlings. Well, you know now, you know Nigeria, they just want to plant 3,000. Instead of the 3,000, if I'd been with them earlier on, I would just say, why don't you just plant, instead of the 6,000 mango and cashew, I would have suggested plant 2,000. The money you used to buy the seedling for the other 3,000 and whatever, use it to feed this one. You will get more than what you will have gotten if you plant everything. I don't know if I'm making sense. Guys, please, let me see if we are communicating. Let me see. Hi, hello, hi. Please, let me just see. I'm going to stop. So you can send me a message, please. I want to know. I'm not just talking to myself. I want to know. I'm not just flowing or blowing grammar. I like to move. I want us to just move together. 